What is a hot take? The definition says it's a quickly produced, strongly worded and often deliberately provocative or sensational opinion or reaction. Well, in my case it's just my strong opinion about certain TF2 topics that is controversial to the common belief. After watching this video, hate me if you must, but I have to get my viewpoints out to the world. You, my dear viewer, hating me for it is a small cost for the truth to be put out on YouTube. I still love you though. With that out of the way, we come to my first hot take. The Your Eternal Reward is the best knife. So many people who rated Spice Knives all chant the same song, with the lyrics saying Your Eternal Reward is Spice's worst knife. But that's not cool, I'm flipping the script. You gotta flip the script, okay? I'm flipping the script. To me, it's Spice's strongest knife. I know that in general, the Kuna is the strongest knife for a very good fight player. That is however not the case for me, because the 70 HP that you start with are too much of a liability for me and I tend to screw up a lot. I am also not a master at trick stabs and I also don't like the ultra careful playstyle, so the Kuna is definitely not the best for me. The Your Eternal Reward enables great chain steps because of the silent killer stat that the weapon has. Upon backstab, the weapon makes a small stabbing sound but the victim doesn't scream out and they get instantly sucked into you and you steal their disguise. This makes it easy to fool players with disguises. And it also helps with taking out NG nests because you can just backstab the NG and the sentry gun won't shoot you because you took on a disguise as him instantly. To me that knife works the best. It has a big downside that it consumes a whole cloak meter when taking a disguise manually. To mitigate that, just play smart when you take a disguise manually and pick up a big ammo box right afterwards to have enough cloak. The other downside, the high cloak drain rate can be mitigated by using the L'Etranger. If you are not the best with trick steps and you know where ammo boxes are, try the YER for big spy plays. For me it's actually the best knife, not the worst. Why is not the worst class? Watching YouTube videos I have heard numerous times that people declare Spy as the worst class. Spy is a bad class. Is he though? You can be sure that any class tier list you watch will put Spy at the very bottom. I understand that Spy might be the weakest class in a competitive environment because teams are very well coordinated there. Even that is debatable though, because depending on the environment, Spy can have a big impact on games. In Highlander, Spy is not that bad. I don't think you can make the statement that Spy is the worst class. There have been so many times where picking Spy and taking out a couple of engine nests or picking off numerous key players of the opposing team broke a stalemate and won my team the game. It also happens very often that I play casual and my team has no chance against the other team and my teammates all die one after the other without doing any damage. In situations like that, Spy is the strongest class. If you pick engineer or medic under these circumstances, you only support an already weak team and you will inevitably lose. Spy has a very high potential to turn games around and having a high impact on the game, so saying Spy is the worst class is just absurdly wrong to me. It is safe to assume that the people who made these lists can't play Spy well and therefore put Spy at the bottom. They clearly have never used the class to make a huge play that turned the game around. Scouts should be at 105 max HP. Scouts are such an annoying bunch. They run across the map with insane speed, they can dodge most of the things, buzz around like annoying mosquitoes and utilize flank plays and pick off many classes very easily. When I play scout I am often shocked how easy it is to two shot a medic or even kill off a heavy with three meat shots before he even knows what hit him. Some good scout players are in the air most of the time making it not only very hard to hit them for most classes, but also very annoying. To make up for scouts insane speed and double jump ability, 
The class should be at 105 max HP. Scan's strength should come with more of a risk. In 1v1 situations, Scout is heavily f favored against all other classes. 105 HP is the perfect number, just above the range where one direct grenade would kill him. A rocket at point blank range would kill the scout, as it should be the case. If you are a scout main, please don't hate me, it's just that I hate the class and I think that the class is a little overpowered as it is. Keep in mind that the Sandman exists. This badge grants the scout the ability to shoot baseballs, but this item lowers the scout's max HP by 15. At 110 HP, scout is still fine, so it should be okay to put the little bastard at 5 less HP. I mean, come on, just look at the model. It's a frail midget. He should be at less HP than NG or Sniper. Random crits are good. I made a whole video about it, but here is a brief summary. An abolishment of random crits would make the Scotsman skull cutter and the holiday punch basically unusable because the main use of these weapons are random crits. Random crits give newer players a better chance at fighting tryhards because they at least enable noobs to get the occasional kill on veterans. Of course, veterans don't like that and are all butthurt about it when new players get an occasional undeserved kill on them. With random crits removed, the whole weapon balancing would be turned upside down. Many weapons have the downside no random critical hits. If that is suddenly on every other weapon, the weapon with that downside suddenly only have an upside. You don't have to be a professor in logic to understand that this would screw up weapon balancing. Random crits are fair and balanced, believe it or not. They offer noobs a chance against veterans, but veterans even get a higher chance at random crits because they deal more damage, which increases their chance at them. So everyone gets a chance at them, better players even get a higher chance at them, hence they shouldn't complain, so they are fair. Random crits are also balanced because they are very important for weapon balancing. Halloween updates are great and very enjoyable. I'm sure many people share the sentiment because the player count always spike when it's Halloween, but no one wants to admit it. Everybody just says how bad the update is and that they don't like it. People who say that most likely complete every single Halloween contract behind closed doors and play the heck out of the game in that time but they don't admit it and only complain. Woohoo, we got too many new maps and I don't like a new Halloween case. It has only trash on usuals, bad cosmetics and the warping case are also bad. <laughs> Some of that might be true, but overall I like the Halloween updates each year and I'm always looking forward to it. Subclasses are trash. We all know and love the subclasses in TF2. There's the first subclass that comes to mind, the Demo Knight, that is the only subclass that is supported by many unlocks by the game itself. There are many other subclasses like Battle MG, Fat Scout, Trollger, Battle Medic or Gunspy. All of these are fun and a welcome change from the usual game, but in reality none of these subclasses are as strong as the class's usual and intended playstyle, so they are weak, in other words trash. Don't get me wrong, they are very fun and trash. A good portion of my playtime goes to Demonite, Gunspy and Battle Medic, and they can work from time to time. You won't get constant success with a subclass unless you are a god at one particular one of them, like Thora Light. Most of the subclasses are just a different way of playing the class and that different way is not better than the normal way. TF2 is pay to win. What an absurd statement you might think. The game is free to play? That's true. But ever since I started running around with an unusual hat, I noticed that there's a difference compared to running around with a free-to-play hat. If a spy disguises as me, I instantly can see my unusual hat 
and identify him from a distance. Because I first noticed the unusual effect, then check out the rest of the outfit. If you have a cosmetic loadout that is not too flashy and that doesn't have bright colors on it, you might have trouble identifying a spy that is disguising as you from a distance. With a bright unusual effect, you will spot that spy even at a distance. So you get an advantage from the unusual hat. So TF2 is pay to win. Confirmed. So this is it for my hot take list. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I'm interested in your opinion. Like the video if you did and subscribe for my ramblings like this, gameplay commentary, challenges and weird weapon loadout gameplay. And also click a video on the left to find out what my favorite loadouts are. Bye.